Welcome to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. This is the podcast dedicated to people who want to speak more as a way to build their income and grow their business. Well, welcome everyone to the Wealthy Speaker Podcast. I'm your host, Jane Atkinson. You know, I'm so excited for today's show because we're going to be talking about dun, da, da, dun, podcasts. No doubt many of you, maybe you already have a podcast, some of you might be thinking about doing it, and we're going to talk best practices with, with Doug Sandler. You know, his brand is Nice Guys Finish First, and well, he really walks that talk, and I'm so excited to bring him back on the show. Before we do that, though, our show today is sponsored by our new Alexa flash briefing. It's called the Wealthy Speaker Minute. Woo! I'm uh, I'm like so stoked because these are just starting to roll out into the market. So if you have an Alexa, Every morning, you might say, good morning, Alexa, and Alexa will run you through whatever you've asked for. Maybe it's your news. Maybe it's the weather. But now you can check off the box, the Wealthy Speaker Minute, and I will be getting your day started on, you know, kind of in the Wealthy Speaker manner, and I think that is going to be super cool. So if you're not sure how to do this, let me send you the link, and we'll put this in the show notes. It's A-L-X-A dot me forward slash speaker. Let me say that again because it's a little tricky. A-L-X-A dot me forward slash speaker. And you can go right in and just click the box and say, yes, I would like the Wealthy Speaker Minute into my bedroom or wherever I have my Alexa in the morning. Super, super cool. Now, today... The, our fabulous guest expert is Doug Sandler, and we have him on the line now with us. Welcome, Doug. Jane, I am excited, happy, and amazed that I am back again. So uh-huh. normally after one appearance, I don't get invited back again. So thank you for including me. Back well, again. you know, it's really funny that when you do have a repeat on the show, don't you just feel just a little bit more comfortable? It kind of feels like an old slipper that you're putting on or something. Well, what's so great about it, Jane, is that I, and I've listened to your show now for how long have you had your show? What episode are you on? Like 1,017,000? I don't know. I don't <laughs> how know. Much, how much more comfortable you've gotten in the skin of podcasting. And, and I feel like the same way with me with not only speaking, but podcasting as well. So it, it does, it does fit like a, a glove now. It feels really uh, good. So thank you, you know, for including me. And you live in the world of podcasts. And so that's what we're going to dive into today. And I think it's really interesting because um, there's a lot of people out there who really don't know, you know, should I do one? Should I not do one? And I want to really dig through kind of all the best practices in that. But yeah. also, you know, I'd like to catch up with you since we haven't talked about a year. Um, what's been going on in your speaking business? What's one of the cool things that have happened for you in the last 12 months? Well, what's so great about it is, you know, when you first get started in speaking, and again, Jane, you helped me so, so much in the beginning, just with, uh, from a support perspective and letting me know I'm in the right spot and picking a lane and developing my, my, uh, my message and creating this entire platform. And I owe a lot of that, that original foundation, that template of my speech to you, Aww. What's amazing what happens as you evolve in this in this uh, in this game is that no longer or not any longer but uh, I guess less frequently now than in the beginning um, I have to I have to seek you know there's a lot less hunting now and a lot more of uh, being very discerning with what I want to take and for me instead of trying to fit that client into that mold and like oh my gosh I can figure out how to get that that message that I have into that hands of that person it's speaking people are coming to me and saying hey, can you share your message that you brought to X, Y, and Z with my team? And I'd love to hear more about it. And I've ah. gotten some huge, huge uh, wins as a result of that. When you come at it from a position of leverage and, conference, uh, and confidence, it makes it a lot easier. Confidence is such a huge part of that. And you got really focused in the, in the very early on in what you were selling, Nice Guys Finish First. And I really believe that clarity equals confidence. And so mm-hmm. you just entered knowing what the results of your work was right, right out of the shoot. That was beautiful. 
Well, I felt confident about it. And I think one of the pieces of advice that you gave me early on, which which really helped me was, um, you know, don't be so quick to leave that the safety of that other thing that I had. I had it something that was paying my full time income. So it was like, I could build it with confidence. And and eventually it did get to a point where, okay, well, I can take this DJ business, this entertainment business that I built over 30 years. And I don't necessarily have to just focus on that. I can focus on speaking. And the two can kind of intertwine together for a little while. And now I'm doing a lot less of the DJing business and a lot more of the speaking and podcasting side of things as well. Nice, nice. You can farm that out. So let's talk about podcasts leading to speeches. Would you say that's been true in your own business that people are coming to you to book you in that way because they know you through your podcast? Well, it used to be that people would know me through my pod. I mean, that if I take a step back for just one quick second, the only reason I started a podcast to begin with was to promote my speaking and my writing business. So when I originally got into the podcasting game, it was all about how do I create a, a tool that I'm going to be able to use to, uh, to, to find speaking gigs and to sell more books. And ultimately, that's exactly what happened. And then people started to really find me through that. So yeah, podcasting for me has been, has been or speaking through my podcasting tool has been the way that I have that I've built my entire network. I don't go outside of my podcast network now to it's, build my speaking business or my podcasting business. I love it. I love it. And you have to tell me about some of those cool podcasting conferences because I, it would be nice to, you know, think about myself, you know, just going up that one more level because I think a lot of podcasters and podcast listeners are interested in the speaking business too. And so it might be nice to be known on that front. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I just realized that I haven't read your bio and let me, I, I think it's important. There's, there's <laughs> important things in here that I really want to cover. Yeah, off. Jane, my mom had written that bio and I, ah, needed <laughs> I don't want to disappoint your mom. Okay. So here we go. Doug Sandler is an entrepreneur and industry leader. His book, nice guys finish first is a number one ranked Amazon bestseller as a podcast host of the nice guys podcast, Doug has interviewed Gary Vanderchuk. That's a pretty cool get. Uh, Ariana Huffington from Huffington Post, Dan Harris from Good Morning America, Ron Klain, White House Chief of Staff, and dozens of celebs. This is interesting. I'm going to talk to you about how you get those people. Doug is a nationally recognized speaker, writer, and founder of Turnkey Podcast Company. And we have something free for everybody today that's so super cool. Uh, Providing podcast podcast production, editing, and launch services. As host of the Nice Guys on Business podcast, he has over 2 million downloads in over 175 countries worldwide and generated in (laughs) mid six figures from his creative podcast business development system. I just reached 45,000 and I thought, yeah, "Yeah, this is so great. I was so happy. And then I see this. (laughs) Never. I knew that it was like a little blip on the big scheme of things in terms of what was out there and going on. Congratulations. That's just so amazing. It's, thank you, Jane. And, and I, was, I would say this to anyone that was, is trying to follow me in the podcasting space. Never compare your beginning to someone else's middle. You know, I'm, exactly. I'm now 800 episodes into my podcast. And yeah. it's like, you know, for me, it, it, it is the only tool that I use for, uh, for creating my business. So it, 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 the reason we have so many downloads is because of that. How um, often do you put your podcast out then? We do five episodes a week now, and uh, two of the five are just me and my co-host just kind of um, uh, riffing back and forth about business in general and just about life. Uh, we do throw business philosophies and principles in those Tuesdays and Thursday episodes, but Mondays and Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday are our days to do, or my days to do my interviews. And uh, I think we've done close to 600 interviews in those 800 episodes. And it, like I said, it has been the only way that I have uh, built my network is through my I podcast. Love I love it. And I'm looking at you. This is really funny. Um, I want to talk to you about two things, your setup and uh, your co-host. When you riff with somebody else, is it just that you feel like just talking to yourself can get a little mundane. Like, tell me about the co-host. I don't even know if I could do a show if it was just me because I uh, I tend to be the color commentary to to <laughs> the the structure that someone else sets up, and that's a that's a great and valuable point. If you have someone in your life that it's just like for me and Strick, Strickland Bonner is my co-host. 
Mm-hmm. We've been best friends for 20 years. And on our yeah. podcast, we are just having a phone call. We just happen to have a microphone in front of us. We forget we have the microphone because we just, we're just rapping and we're having such a good time talking about the same stuff we talk about on the phone. So if you're someone that thinks you have a message, but don't think you quite know how to formulate that message, find yeah. someone that is, is stronger at that than you are. And that's, again, I built a career out of that and a great partnership. That's really nice. And one of the really key things that I've been noticing on other people's podcasts lately is just how conversational they are. Don't feel like you have to be something. Just have a connection and a conversation with somebody. Maybe you prepare three or four questions or something like that. And then it just goes from there, right? Yeah, well, I, I've gotten, gotten into the habit recently, recently over the last 300 episodes, let's say, of not even writing any questions down. But all I've done was created a, um, a bio based upon some creative uh, research that I've done. So I spent two or three minutes doing the creative research through the bio. I know enough about them, about their speaking business. I've listened to them on a podcast, let's say, even just a portion of it. I've gone to YouTube. I've made sure that I'm pronouncing their name right. You know, all of the key things. And then beyond that, it's just like, hey, you don't sit down with somebody that you're about to go into a networking meeting with and say, let me do some research on this person and figure out. You ask the questions as a curious person. And yeah, I think if just be that, curious. Yeah, that's, that, that makes for a great, and a great conversation. And especially for the, the market that you're appealing to and, 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 and sharing your message with, Jane, we yeah. are all, as speakers, we are all born talkers. I mean, that's what we do. <laughs> it's easy. It's not, it, and where there's never a shortage of where right. the conversation can go, and uh, there's just always something else to talk about. So, well, I, and I, and that's I always, people are getting nervous that they won't know where to go next. I think sometimes when you write down the stuff in front of you, you're so focused on how do I get that question into the conversation yeah. that you forget to actually listen to the answer that they've just given you. So That's I, right. I, I don't write down the questions anymore other than just the, uh, the bio. I do share in the show notes, I do share contact information about the guest and any important key takeaways. But for the most part, it really is just a conversation based upon curiosity alone. All right. So I'm looking at you now. We are recording this on just to give you some background and some structure. If you're just starting on your own podcast, I record on Zoom and I have found Zoom to be just fantastic for that. And and also we look at each other when we're doing that. So I'm looking at you. You've got your hashtag podcaster (laughs) shirt on, which is totally cool. Podcasting nerd. You've got your nice guy's logo up above your shoulder and you've got this big honk and mic right there. And and right. I actually have a Yeti mic, but I move around so much that I don't like using oh, but it. I, I do I too. But like, look, I just, I just take uh, yeah, it with me it wherever, with I, go, you're, wherever you're, I go. Yeah. And you're, I think you're at a standing desk right now, are you? Yeah. I, this is the best way for me because yeah. I am a, I'm a pacer. If I'm sitting down, I get a lot of tension in my lower back and I've yeah. created some back problems over, for, over the years, not just from podcasting, just in sitting at a desk for 30 years. It, yes. So standing is the best way to go. Get a good standing desk. It raises and lowers. Yeah. Get a good stool in case you want to lean, but have your microphone so that you can move now. Now I'm sitting down on a, on a stand up. Okay, yes. that's good. So See, I just haven't around. gotten used to my Yeti. So I went back to my headset because someone said, oh, it sounded like you were backing up. And I just, anyway, I should get a, I, I should get the proper uh, thing for it so it can move with me. And I do have a stand up desk. I love being able to, it kind of shifts your energy when mm-hmm. you stand up um, halfway through or something. It's just a very interesting and yeah. Anyway, we record on Zoom. Uh, we can do it out to the cloud or we can do it to the desktop. And then after that, we shuffle it over to the team. Now, your team could be that team, right? Right, I mean, right. You're, you're doing that now for other people. Tell me about getting into that business. Was it because so many people asked you, hey, you've had a lot of success in podcasting. How did you do that, man? You thought okay, I'm going to start charging for this. Well, what happened was we were, uh, I I was selling speaking through the podcasting platform as a business development tool. People were calling me, asking me to come out and speak. And I would discover that I was traveling for a day to get there. I was doing my speech for 45 minutes. I was turning around and traveling back home. And in three days, I had made that money for the, the one day or the day and a half of travel. I could make the same or more money sitting at my desk from from creating a podcast. And somebody came to me that uh, that I met actually at a uh, a conference in New York, and he said, 
hey, you have this really cool podcast. Can you teach me how to do the same thing? I said, I'd love to. I've never done it. I was very upfront with, with him, Lou Diamond. And I said, Lou, I've never done this before. I would do it. Could you help me come up with what I would charge you in order to do that? He told, <laughs> like me, told me what he would be willing to pay for it. And I thought, you know, for what I would be making, making from him, I could do two, three speeches and still not make the same amount of money and be able to sit here at my chair and watch this all unfold through my pajamas. Mm. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to try that. And then it, then many people started coming to us and we've been very fortunate. I think we've launched something like 50 shows in the last, you know, 16 Ooh, or 17 months. That's so. fantastic. Good for you. Well, I love hearing about that success because, um, we're going to offer our listeners something that they can do to uh, at least learn about it. And then mm -hmm. if they want to get involved with you, they can. Let's talk about where that gift is that we have for people. We'll put it in the show notes as well. Sure. Well, we have, there's a, there's a white paper I wrote. The biggest question that I get asked from people is how do you make money from your show? Mm. And one of the ways has made us a mid six figure income in the last 18 months alone and so what we're sh sharing with people is the five ways to make money podcasting. And we use that as, as our, uh, as our white paper. So people can actually see there are five ways that are there and all five of them can make you money. And one of them can make you a significant amount of money if you do it the way that we have done it. And I'm happy to share that if, if they just go over to my website and grab that gift. Okay. So we're going to send them to turnkeypodcast.com forward slash gift turnkeypodcast dot com forward slash gift and we will put that in the show notes for people so how do people make money at podcasting yeah. i you know i've got to tell you my new favorite podcast have you ever listened to dax shepherd's armchair expert no no tell me okay. more <laughs> so well it's very colorful <laughs> so if you're like a little sensitive to swearing or anything like that oh, uh it may not be the uh the perfect one for you dax shepherd is an actor and um but he's got all these la layers of depth to him that really keeps surprising me every time i listen i learn something else about him and anyway um what i what i've learned a he's uh, got a ton of sponsors, which I think is what we're going to be talking about. And I love, I've been loving the way he's so conversational and how he tells his story in order to get the other person's story, which I don't think as an expert was my go-to way of doing it. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on the on the, the format that you want to have for your show. Keep in mind, as people are tuning into your show and they're listening to guests, they're not necessarily tuning into your show to hear your guests. They want to tune in because they've fallen in love with Jane Atkinson, not Aww. because they've fallen in love with your your guest. And while you're sharing Doug a great Sandler? story. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, my feeling is I'd want to, I'd want to tune into Jane's show because I want to hear Jane and Jane interpret huh. the story of the guest coming in. So yeah, if you look at it that way, your guests are coming back, not over and over again because of your guests, because that's always a new person. They're coming right. in because they want to hear more about, about you. Our, well, our high, yeah. Really cool. Really cool. And I just didn't, <clears throat> it, it, it took an uh, armchair expert for me to make that kind of flip a -roo in my own mind. And I think people will see that maybe moving forward. So uh, my point of bringing up Dax, Dax's show was that he has got, so he goes off twice during the interview to talk about his sponsors, him and his psychic talk about the sponsors of the show. And I think they have two or three at two different breaks. So they may have six sponsors for one mm -hmm. show. Right. So he's got to be making some pretty good um, money from that, don't you think? Well, my biggest concern with advertising is it's the way that everybody feels like they have. And that's one of the ways that you can make money podcasting, which again is in that free gift of ours. But I think oftentimes that that is a challenge for someone that is first getting into the podcasting space right. to say, well, wait a minute, I don't even have a show yet. How am I going to find, how am I going to find sponsors? You know, and if I do find a sponsor, what are they going to pay me? And typically a, a, a typical advertising piece was going to make you anywhere between 15 to $20 per thousand downloads that you have of your show. And if you have a show that gets 200 downloads, you're now talking about working for $7 an ad. Yeah. And that isn't necessarily where most beginning podcasters are going to make their money. 
many of the advertising agencies won't even talk to you, just like many of the speaking bureaus don't want to talk to you until you're making 10 or 15 grand a speech. And you're like, well, I'm not right. making 10 or 15 grand because I don't have, a, I don't have whole, an agent. That whole cart horse piece that yes. everybody, okay, so that's good. So advertising may not be our kind of first go-to place. We don't maybe have the uh, notoriety that um, uh, a celebrity might have. Well, let me, can I give you just a spin on it for just a quick second? Sure. Because yes. I think that if we go by the attitude that we are going to be industry standard, like in our speaking world, I'm just going to be just like every other speaker. Now, you won't say that mentally, but I mean, you won't say that to a client, but you might say that mentally. Well, how am I going to compare myself to someone that has a best selling book? If I have a best selling book too, who's going to get the gig? And maybe I need to charge a little less than that. That's the wrong approach to take. As with selling your show for advertising dollars is the wrong approach to take if you're going by industry standards of making 15 or 20 bucks an episode, uh, an ad. So what I would say is instead of selling your, your podcast as an advertising tool, why not sell your brand as the advertising tool? So someone that comes into this that already has a big social media platform like you do, Jane. So instead of just selling your show and you said you hit 45,000 downloads from, <laughs> you know, from the X amount, so you're getting X per, per show, you might say, well, I'm only going to get 25 bucks an ad. I'm not going to do that. But how about if you say, I'm going to charge $5,000 a month, but I'm not only just going to give my podcast, my podcast um, uh, channel away, I'm going to sell my entire social media brand. So I'm going to put an ad on Twitter. I'm going to put an ad on Facebook. I'm going to put an ad on LinkedIn. I'm going to put an ad ah, on my show. You bundle and in, it up. And, and in addition to that, I'm going to give that advertiser a spot to come on my show and talk about their product. Not in a selling way, but more of a, a let me find out about your business way. Mm -hmm. So now you've taken an ad that you would make five, maybe five or 10 or $20 on over the course of doing an ad for, and for them, but you're selling now a month of sponsorship for five grand. Sell your brand not not just what you have your hands on in in the in the narrow lane of podcasting and for us we haven't made one cent that way because that's not what we focus on we focus on another way <laughs> and and again that part of that other way is that is the five gifts we want people to see how open i can make their eyes when it comes to five ways that you can make money podcasting advertising is a way but not the only way not the only way so one of the things um that I've just started, well, not just started doing, but I decided to sponsor all of my own shows with yeah. my own stuff that I'm promoting. And uh, I think that's been working for us. It just hasn't felt really great from an advertising standpoint to, um, you know, I know I could find sponsors. I have uh, relationships with lots of people that I could do it with, but it just hasn't felt like the perfect go-to for me. What do you think about sponsoring with your own offerings? So calls to action, extremely important. And again, a second tool that is on that five tools. And, I, and again, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sharing them as, we, as we're going along and they're in written form so people can obviously see them. But calls to action, extremely important. However, put a different twist on it. You know, it's all about putting a slight different twist instead of having a commercial for yourself on your show or in addition to having a commercial for yourself on your show. Yeah. Why not relate to the guest that's coming on your show? And obviously you want to drop in as many times as you can without being aggressive or selling on your show. Okay. When, when someone comes on your show, in your case, Jane, someone comes on and talks about speaking, um, it, which I'm sure you have a lot of people come on your show and talking about their speaking business. Most. You, you can share your own personal experience based upon the story that they're giving. So for example, they come on and they say something about, um, you know, the challenge that they had when they first got it started speaking. You can say, well, here's what happened when I was coaching another client, very similar to what your story is, John, when you were starting, what I shared with them was to pick a lane. Now, that's one of the things I cover when I go over my, uh, my coaching, in my coaching program. I make, it sh make sure they really understand the importance of picking a lane. Right. I'll make sure I put a link in the show notes about picking a lane and how important that is, but let's get back to you right now. Right, and so, right. So it's more subliminal or a little subtle, just like you might do in a speech. You would kind of plant seeds of the offerings throughout right. it rather than just saying it's sponsored by. Right, and I, and I don't think that, when as soon as you say sponsored by your audience tunes <laughs> out, tune out. Okay. they're like okay where's the little forward button you know you can't if you can pepper your your entire podcast with two or three or four mentions of what you do but not overly selling that mm. people don't even hear it but subliminally sub, subliminally they think 
oh, Jane does that. Okay, that's really cool. I mean, just the fact that you have your book behind you right there, that's a subliminal ad right there. Right, right. So but we don't do visual. <laughs> right, right. Well, we'll say that. We'll say right. that it, it does. It is in a lot of our videos, though. So I do get that. Okay. So why um, why do you think most podcasters might be kind of missing uh, a lot of the formula that you're talking about? I think the issue with most people that get into podcasting, well, a couple of issues. One, most podcasters suffer from this thing called pod fade. They are looking for a, a result, an answer, a response, activity, action, um, big money, 10 episodes in. You know, they're like, holy crap. I, I, you know, I've been doing this now. I've launched my show. And like a rocket, we put all the fuel into this thing at the beginning, getting off the ground. And 10 episodes in, they're like, I haven't made any money from this. Mm -hmm. So I would say that most podcasters don't, uh, are, 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 are failing at this in a nice way. I'm trying to say this. They fail at this because they quit way too early. The other thing that I find very, very important is that most podcasters are not consistent. You know, they, they yeah, put out an episode. Frequency. Sure. So I would tell you that if you're not putting out at least once a week, you're probably not you're putting out enough content. Right. Look at it this way. If you, every time you opened up your microphone, you made the same amount of money that you made by giving a keynote speech, how many times would you like to open up that microphone in a week? And if your answer is as often as possible, that's the right answer. If you say, well, I only want to do it once a week because I don't have any time, you're treating this as a, as a, you know, as a hobby. Um, we went to five episodes a week because we discovered, and again, this is just how our business model was put together. Every time we opened up that microphone, we were making $5,000. Hmm. So how many times do I want to open up that microphone if I make five grand every time I do it? It's a lot. And we felt like five was enough to keep us really, really consistent in the game. It didn't kill us because we do batch recording, so we can do five or four or five episodes at a time anyway. Right. So it's two, two and a half, three hours of, of recording, and we're done for the entire week. So consistency and uh, uh, consistency is definitely key. Yeah. Well, you're making me think about it. I don't know. Um, it's going to once a week has been incredibly game changing in terms of the podcast picking up momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, but then now you're making me think, well, should we be doing it more often? And um, then I look at bandwidth, right? Because I have this whole coaching schedule that I uh, need to adhere to. And so I batch on Mondays. Mm -hmm. So, and about after about three, I'm kind of tapped out. How many can you do in a day? You, well, that's you're, about you're it. You're like a machine, man. No, no. I've seen, I've seen some other people that are machines. They're doing 20 a day. And oh, I'm like, holy no crap, way. I couldn't do that. I so just for, don't even have that brain power. I don't either. I think I'm with you. I, three a day is all I can do. And, and yeah. I don't want to do that five days a week. So I opened up my interview schedule for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, between, somewhere between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. And whoever fits into that schedule. And my schedule is now out until January and February. Right. Now, fortunately, I have a bank of recordings that's already done that usually is a month or a month to three months behind or ahead of the schedule. Yeah. So if I miss doing that two or three days or I want to go on vacation, which I like to do every once in a while, sure. uh, I don't have to worry that I'm going to run out of, I'm going to run out of episodes. Content. What, what most people do is, unfortunately, they, they, they go like in fits and starts. So they'll do like 10 episodes in a week. They get burnt out and they stop for 12 weeks. And it's like, oh my gosh, you ran out of episodes. Yeah. We, we now won't even launch a client show until they have eight episodes in the bank. And if they don't have those eight episodes, we know they're going to run out of steam because most people fade so quickly. Okay, so what was it called? The fade that you talked Pod about? Pod fade. Pod <laughs> fade. Okay, I like I like that you have your own terminology, which is another yeah. tip for people. You know, make up your own terminology. Pod fade. I definitely can see people um, uh, experiencing that, and I think really, if I'm legitimate about this, I probably dabbled around in it for at least two or three years before. I ever committed to doing it weekly. You might have been the one who convinced me to do it weekly. Well, I hope I was because I remember coming on the show last time and, and it was it was one of those things where I just said, oh my gosh, you know, if you're doing once a month or every couple of weeks or something like that, it's just, yeah. it's not enough for you to feel like you're, you know, you're in the business. And now yeah. that you're, what are you, 90? I'm thinking I'm looking at your 
or 94 episodes or 98 no episodes idea. in. I don't, I don't put a number next. I, we should really put an episode number next to them, shouldn't we? Well, okay. So how important I, is that? I, I guess it's not important from a, from a listener's perspective, but I think that if you start to see some measurable progress, like I would, I would just say, I would say to you, for everyone that comes on your show, and I'm just looking at your show, and I'm not cutting your show at all, but just so you understand like where I'm looking at it from, Sure. every guest that comes on your show, you should be holding responsible for reviewing your show. Every guest that comes on your show, you should be holding them responsible for also for sharing the message with their market too, because the way that you get that 45,000 number up to a million quickly yeah. Yeah. is to tap into the people that are coming on your show. It's like okay. when you go out and speak, at a, at a conference, Jane, you, you don't speak at a conference with the intent of leaving the stage and never talking to anybody again. Your intent is to build your entire future calendar based upon that audience. I love it. So why aren't you doing the same with your podcast? Okay, so review, share. Is there a third thing that we should ask them to do? We have five simple rules when they come on our show before I give them the guest seat. Okay. Rule, rule number one, subscribe to the show. Oh, subscribe. That's so good. I mean, it's so basic. Rule number two, now that you've subscribed, listen <laughs> to the show. <laughs> I want to make sure that you're... Subscribe. Really... <laughs> I'm doing these in order. That's Love okay. Subscribe to listen. Okay. Yes. And third thing, rate and review the show. Rate and review. Now, I'm going to take it a step further because I'm a little bit bold with my clients. Now that we get 30 to 50 applications every week to come on our show. Send me a screenshot. Screenshot. Oh, jeez. You're really tough. Okay. So rate and review. the nice guy. Where'd he go? Just kidding. Okay. So, so it's interesting because I've had a lot of people. I used to say, and I still do say this to a degree, depends on who's applying to the show. Rate yeah. and review my show five stars. Yeah. And they're like, why, why would I give you a five-star review on, on not listening to the show? I said, listen to the show. If you don't think it's worth five stars, or you think it's worth two stars, give me the two-star review. But obviously, you're not going to want to come on a two-star rated show, would you? Sure, exactly. Yeah, so, right. so it's easy for me to say that. So yeah. subscribe, rate, and review. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, listen to the show. You must have a microphone. If you don't have a microphone, you can't come on my show because how is it going to be for my audience to tune into you if you're calling from a cell phone that sounds like crap and you're calling my show and I sound like I'm, I'm going through a professional microphone? Okay. And the fifth one, the most important one in this particular case is going to be tell me what your plans are to promote my show on social media. Wow. Good and job. The, and now remember, if you handle this like a business, if you handle this like a business and you treat it like such, you are going to get an ROI that's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, the amount, you can't create a seven-figure business where we will be in 2019. You can't create a seven-figure business based upon handling this. Oh, I hope they rate and review the show. I hope they listen. Boy, I, I have <laughs> never once, I, I haven't asked my listeners hardly to do it. I mean, I have on a few of the shows, but really not to the degree that I should be. I have never asked a guest to do any of these things. I mean, Doug, you are totally blowing my mind here. So we call this and the nice guy rules. We, okay. give, we use this as leverage before I give them the link to my schedule. I love it. If I use it after, how much leverage do I have? Exactly. And then, and then when, because you have a team in place, and even if you don't, you still could do this, but if you, especially because you have a team in place, after your show airs, remind them of what they told you they were going to do to promote you on Ooh. social media. Okay, so what's great is that Monica, who does tease up all the podcasts for me, she's going to listen to this, and, she, <laughs> oh, and, I, and she knows now that this is the directive that is coming her right. way. So, Monica, right. new letter when you go to. I mean, basically, I don't even have to tell her anything because she's going to listen and take all the notes for this. Well, I look at it this way: the clients that are paying us very well to produce and manage their show, they're holding us responsible for making sure. Not only sounds professional, but when they when they don't have any results, monetary results, I have to be able to go back to them and say to them, "This is why you don't have any monetary results. You don't. You're not monetizing your show because you're not following up with your with your uh, with your guests that are on your show. You don't have any reviews of your show. So if if somebody like Ariana Huffington or Gary V or Ron Klain or any of those people that you mentioned in my bio that have come on my show, mm -hmm. if they were to look at my ratings and reviews and see that I had five reviews they and I have a hundred, 
they're not going to come on my show. Yeah. And we want to get like the Amy Porterfields on the show and right. that, those type of people. And I know we need them. Okay. So here's the problem or not a problem, but a rub. I'm in Canada and I cannot see what's on iTunes in the U S mm-hmm. so um, how does one navigate that? Just have somebody on the team who's there take a look and tell us what's there? I think, I think you can. I think you can go through your iTunes page and you can switch the, the nationality of the, um, of the reviews oh. and you can see where you're, where you're going. Also, it depends on your host. Your host can also tell you Lips- where your reviews... Yep. If we're on Libsyn, we can... I, I don't know how it works exactly with Libsyn. Um, okay. We have uh, we've used Libsyn for years, and then we have a website through another company, and they actually can show us who those international reviews are from. But there are many many apps that you can that you can use that will tell you what your reviews are from the other countries. Okay, that's really good to know because we need to do some more research on this. You know, I have to admit that one of my biggest foibles is never following the numbers. You know, when I start to think about the numbers, my eyes just start to glaze over and I go to a, a right. very not happy place. <laughs> well, let me, let me say this though. If yes. your goal is not those numbers, then that's not, then the numbers aren't important to you. Originally, right. those numbers were key for us for building community and sharing our message. Right. Now, based upon one of those other things, the ways that we use to monetize, the third and fourth and fifth ways we use to monetize our shows. Again, if you want to get that, you can just get, go to the show notes and Jane will have it for you. But the way, the way to see it is we don't focus on the numbers at all. Once we got to a million downloads, who cares how many more numbers we have? Mm-hmm. Once we got to 200 reviews, who cares how many more reviews that we have? Because okay. So now at, you could stop worrying about it. I don't but worry I about it get, at all. I need to get to those numbers. I think I should be doing a better job of that. So thank you. The The idea sure. of asking the guest for those things is, psh, you just blew my mind. Thank you cool. very much. Um, talk about what some of the, uh, you know, systems, let's walk through somebody who's, brand new maybe they're mm-hmm. not very tech savvy right What's their role in this and then what can a company like turnkey podcast do for them in terms of making it easier for themselves and and uh, i have a client that i might yeah. need to recommend she get to you pretty quick because i think she's ready to awesome. uh, change her company Thanks, Jane. Well, the, the, the way to look at it is this way. We have a discovery call with each one of our clients. And in that discovery call, the thing that we have to get out of them first is what is the goal of your show? Because you can have one of three goals. You can have it to make money. You can have it to share a message and you can you have it to, to build influence. So brand, influence, or money. Some people, it's a combination of all three, but probably one of the three of them is going to pop out as, as larger than the other three, you know, as the other two. Right. So the first thing that we do is we look at that. And then we design a strategy. And whether you're using a production company like mine or doing it on your own, you have to understand who are you, who is the show for? You know, who do you, who is, is listening to the show? What is your message and what's the service that you're providing? And if you're not 100% clear on any of those, you'll right. have no positive results from your show that, that you can measure because you won't know if you're doing a good job or not. Right. And, and, and that's really, I think... It's the same for speaking too. Right, right. If you're not clear on those things and yet you're ready, you're ready to fire, you've got to circle back and ready and aim. It's really the same process, wouldn't you say? Agreed, agreed. So there's three phases of, of putting a podcast together. The first is the production fa- or the concept to launch phase. That's the phase where you really just have to get your show off the ground. So you have to be very clear about your message. It, even if that message changes, at least going into it, you have to be very clear on what your message is and you have to be clear about what your goals are for your show. Mm-hmm. So the concept to launch phase includes things like uh, building the show template, your intro and your outro and your and your royalty free music and your cover art design and your show notes template and establishing the relationship with iTunes and a hosting company like Libsyn. I mean, there's a bunch of different things that go into that process. Mm-hmm. So phase one is the concept to launch. And we kind of want to get our hands around where our clients are technology wise. Some of them right. have no tech skills at all. And some of them are really tech savvy and don't need much of our help at all. So Concept of launch is phase one. Phase two is that, okay, now that you have a show that's launched, that phase one it generally takes 30 to 60 days. Phase two is now that I have a show launched, I need to professionally produce the show. So we're going to take those recordings and we're going to insert them into the template that we created during phase one, that concept of launch phase. Mm-hmm. And then phase three, after you kind of get the production and the editing and everything else going. So phase one, concept of launch, phase two, production. Phase three is now that I've done these things, I have to really understand what I have my hands on. Because until I have 20, 30, 40 episodes under my belt, 
I really don't understand exactly how to do an interview properly. I really don't understand about how to create a call to action that's of value. I really don't understand about advertising and sponsorship and affiliates and all of the other ways that you can use to make money. People always want to say, well, how do I make money? How do I make money? I'm like, okay, we're going to get there, but we got to get a show off the ground first. It's like teaching you. It's like saying to you, I want to put fuel in my car. Oh, wait a minute. I need a car first. Yes, you need the car first. So let's create the car, build the car to your specs. Let's show you how to get this thing out on the road and drive it. Once you're driving it, then we can show you really how to make some cash from your show. And that's, that's the key that so many people want to hurry up to get to. And there really is no, just like being a great keynote speaker, there's no um, substitution for experience. Many people, unfortunately, they, um, they also let uh, perfect get in the way of done. Mm. And so they want to be so perfect with their, uh, with their interview skills and, they, and their microphone yeah. technique and all that before they even get the show off the ground. I'm like, you're going to be crappy at it. Just face it. Let's go. Yeah. Just go. Wow. As I'm sitting here, I'm actually getting a little misty because I feel <laughs> like I have watched Doug Sandler go from nice guy to like badass. Wow. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you just have this nailed. You know what you're doing in this whole podcast world. And Thank I'm you. so excited for you. Oh, this thanks, is Jane. like amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, you really got this down and uh you're you right. try doing try do, doing something for thousands of episodes and not be good at it. I mean, it's I, if I was no good at it, I would have gotten out of it a long time ago. I know what I know how to do well, and this is one of the things I'm excited about. I appreciate you even noticing that, but I'm just talking what I'm like. This I'm oh so my I love gosh. it. I feel, <laughs> Wow. I, I, mean, I want to run around. You've given me like a million things that I need to be doing different. We don't even edit our podcast. Oh, we, boy. <laughs> oh, see? Oh, boy. Uh, that, that got no, no, cold. no. Not oh, boy as in. That's not a bad thing. We don't edit. We really don't do much editing. Oh, in the interview, But it, we still want a professional that. sounding production. You know, yeah, you still yeah. have to end distribute well, we professional. We right. talent and stuff. Right, right, like right. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, here's a question. Uh, because I've heard a couple of different ways for this uh, intros. Do you prefer uh, somebody else's voice doing the intro? How do you like to see those done? So um, I'm assuming when you say intro, you mean like the open and the close, the yeah. the open of the show intro, where uh, some intro. yeah 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 right right. So the open and the close. Oftentimes, I will tell my clients to have somebody else do it so that you can create some depth to your show. No, you get a you get a um, a professional sounding voiceover from either a friend of yours that has a great voice or a professional voiceover person. You're probably going to spend less than two or three hundred bucks to get it. Yeah. So it make and it can be. I mean, for, in our case, the nice guys on business, we have, geez, we probably have literally five hundred opens and closes, different ones, yeah. uh, because we do ours based upon some movie themes, and we just try to have oh, fun with fun. it. But if you had an open and close and you did the same one every show, people are expecting it and that's fine. And I would say less than a few hundred dollars, you have an open and a close. Okay, fair enough. I, and then see, I take a lot of my leads from Amy Porterfield and she has somebody else doing hers. One of the things I have to say that I love, love, love about her podcast is her tagline, which is business advice so easy, you'll think you're cheating. <laughs> that's good. Damn, that's good. That is such a good line. So, and then she said on her podcast that she wanted to do it over with her own voice introducing it, which surprised me. So I well, do my, just, I have my own voice right now and I thought I was going to change it. And then she said that, and now I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, I don't think it matters in terms of how many downloads that you're going to get or how much money you can make from your show. I think it makes me feel better <laughs> to have somebody else do my podcast intro. Cause I just never loved my voice. So it's yeah, like, okay, well, yeah, you I know, you. it's always I that way. I, I think it would be nice. Uh, I was thinking maybe, you know, I have, uh, some guys in my life who have really great. Yeah. Voices, and I of thought, course. Well, It'd be nice for me to do that. But anyway, just know it's under review. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Just it's know that it won't make a difference between whether you make money or get speaking gigs or whatever front work clients from your show. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so what else? What's one more idea that we should close out this podcast with? What's something that you hmm. think people maybe, what's one of the biggest mistakes that people make? I really want to circle back to what you said about, yeah. um, uh, perfect getting in the way of done. 
Like that's yeah. an important piece. So let's make sure we write that down because just know you just have to start and get it going. Sure. I what think are, one, of, one of the pieces of advice that I could give to someone that's listening to this is trying to figure out, well, how effective can I be at podcasting and, and what's the most effective tool that you could possibly use to, to promote your show and be big on your show and create yourself as an influencer in this mar- whatever market that you're in is I would say if you focus on podcasting as a broadcast, as radio, um, you tend not to get the full benefit of podcasting because podcasting, you have the ability to engage your audience directly, uh, not through your podcast, but through all of the other tools that we have, through social media, through email campaigns, through everything else. And if you, if you are actually taking your message and you're chopping it up into bite-sized pieces and using those pieces of content on social media like Twitter to create an audiogram or an audio file or to create a photo that you can, that you can use... Um, engage specifically audience members that want to help you. You probably know a handful of listeners to your show that maybe routinely quote or or um, or a comment about your show. I know that we routinely, even as big an audience that we have, we only have a couple handfuls of people that routinely comment, and we've created a Facebook group around those couple dozen people. Cool. And we've grown that to about 400 people now in our group. But the engagement factor alone is so key. So if there's any advice I would give you is use your podcast as an engagement tool for your entire brand. And don't focus just on sharing a message and not doing anything in return. Respond, engage one-on-one with people in your audience and they will, they will promote you. They'll build your group. They'll build your audience. They'll find you guests. They'll find you advertisers. They'll find you money, clients that you never thought you had. We've had I've had clients that have given me tens of thousands of dollars in business just by referring me to somebody because they love us and not just because we're, we're, we're zany and antic. You know. <laughs> oh wow. Uh well, you I feel like we've just like it, we're just at the tip of the iceberg here. There's so much more we could go into, but I know that there are people who are like, okay, I'm going to go get I'm going to go to turnkeypodcast.com forward slash gift. I'm going to grab all of the ways to monetize this and then I'm going to think about uh, this versus my speaking business and how I can integrate these ideas into that. How have you kind of balanced that whole speaking business and podcasting? Because really, would you identify more now as a podcaster than as a speaker? Uh, probably now I would because of the stuff I said at the beginning where I discovered yeah. that is it easier for me to make money from my, from my computer or go out and keynote speak. But that's yeah. me. That doesn't mean that that has See, to be I, the people. I would that like that too, actually. Okay. I don't, don't <laughs> want to be on the road. I have no desire to be out speaking. I do, right. I do it you know, just a few times a year just to help promote the business. But yeah. So really although my speaking either. business didn't have as long a tail as yours, Jane, for the decades <laughs> that you were in the speaking business and continue to be, my, uh, my speaking business has, um, has f- fallen prey to the ease of which my podcasting business has taken over. So mm. while I don't want, you know, I have plenty of people that are in my audience and plenty of friends of mine that are out there speaking 100 to 150 times a year and loving the energy that the stage provides them. And if that's you as you're listening to this, then I would say, Awesome. Then use your podcast as a tool to b- develop your speaking business. For me, I'd much rather make money from affiliates, advertising, and other ways that uh, that I've shared on that in that gift that okay. that really have helped me to uh, to build my business that way. And so, uh, you know, that's that's kind of the direction that I went with my show. All right. Well, at uh, the risk of being selfish, I got to go because I'm going to download that paper and I'm going to take it with me on the road and I'm going to start to examine it and figure out what the next step is for uh, the Wealthy Speaker podcast. Uh, Really quick, uh, what do you think about the flash briefings in order to promote the podcast? So tell me about a flash, tell me about a flash briefing. Okay. So Alexa is the little box that you have, right? And so my Wealthy Speaker Minute, one, it's a one minute recording, will go into Alexa. And my goal is that that will have people exposed to me that wouldn't, you know, how many Alexa users are there out there? And uh, the people who who check off that they want to be a part of the speaking world um, will get my flash briefing every morning. Well, I think that's a great idea. I really do. I think it's kind of like a mini sewed. If it's, if it's one other way to tie people into your message and what you're all about and to hook them into listening to the full episode at another yeah. time or even through Alexa. I know our Nice Guys show is also on Alexa and Spotify and as well. And what's great about it is you're, the way that you're doing is it's just a part of your morning. Alexa, give me Jane Atkinson's, uh, you know, her flash minute. And I think that's really cool. Great. I got an idea from you now. 
There you go. So talk to uh, Jeff at thealexaguy.com. We just did a podcast together, Jeff Smith. He's the Alexa guy. And he got me set up. Not a super expensive thing to do. And But now I need to uh, put 365 of these into the can. I think I've got a couple dozen so far. And I'm awesome. back to the thing. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to videotape them as well. And we're going to cross-purpose them. Oh, this sounds like a great idea. I am going to be talking to Jeff okay. Smith soon. Okay, you talk to Jeff. Okay, good. This is good. I just put some people together that I, I love both of you, so I think that's going to be fun. All right, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and here's what I want you to do. Please go to Amazon or, sorry, iTunes and rate and review our program. We would love a five-star rating, as you can tell from Doug. It's really important that we get this. What else should we be asking for, Doug, at the end of every broadcast? Yeah, I would say, well, give him a single call to action. Just for now, it's just rate and review the show. Watch those go from 15 to 100. The fastest you see how quickly you can get to 100 reviews, Jane. You have okay. the audience to do it. They just have That's to do it. That's my goal. Thank you for that, Doug. That's my goal. Let's get from, uh, let's get to 100 reviews so that people who I would like to be on the show will take our show seriously. <laughs> they do already, it's, but this is fuel to the fire of taking it more seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Doug Sandler, for being with us today. And with that, we'll say see you soon, Wealthy Speakers. Bye for now, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Wealthy Speakers show. Please visit speakerlauncher.com for your free wealthy speaker audit and visit speakerlauncher.com forward slash podcast for show notes and many more resources to help you catapult your speaking business. See you soon, wealthy speakers.